Hi, I'm Dave Elsey, aka Mischief, and this is the Conspiracy Cupboard. Just uh, mind that title sequence on your way. Oh, finally the fix. Whoa! Okay, that's new. Thanks. Bloody hell. Hi. Welcome to Conspiracy Cupboard. I'm Dave Elsie, and today's episode is going to be on Commander David Fravor, Ryan Graves, and Chad Gable, and those incidences from the US military involving uh, the Tic Tac incident, the Gimbal incident, and other various instances we can find and sort of pull together. Now, uh, I can't find any that I can uh, tie in at the moment from the UK uh, Navy or Air Force. So, unfortunately, we just have to go with what we've got from um, the Americans. So, um, let's get into it, shall we? So, here we go. Now. So, the Tic Tac incident, as it was uh, now referred to, uh, was given the name by Commander Chad Gable, who actually filmed the Tic Tac after Commander David Favour had chased it already. Um, him and another pilot were out uh, on manoeuvres. So uh, if you've seen uh, the Joe Rogan experience or you've seen any interviews with Commander David Favour, I'm sorry, this is probably going to bore you because obviously I've just got to go back through a few things that obviously happened and that he has said about the incident. So the incident took place in 2004 off the East Coast of America while they were doing workups and training exercises on the USS Nimitz, which involved uh, other carriers, which was the uh, USS Princeton and the other ones, I'm sorry, off the top of my head, I cannot remember. But the main one, obviously, that's remembered being there is the Nimitz. Um, so basically, the workups involved um, teaching everyone to work together, to learn how to uh, do manoeuvres with your co-pilots, to liaise with uh, your command units like the Princeton and the Nimitz, and obviously stop uh, terrorists or any foreign legion coming towards the ship's and be able to take them down. So the um, the first um, time that Commander David Favour saw this, they were getting ready to go and do one of these workup exercises. Now the uh, workup point, the cap point they were going to was 60 miles away. Uh, the first two guys that set off were from the Royal Marines and they were going to be the bad guys. So they set off and the Princeton called them and asked them if they had, uh, how much fuel they had on board, uh, what ordnance they were carrying, um, and to see whether they could intercept these um things that have been seen coming down basically uh, over the water uh, they came back and said that they didn't have enough fuel or whatever so uh, they asked commander david fravor what's your ordinance what are you carrying he said i've got a cat nine which is just a big basically a fake um seeker missile on the side of the, of the craft and obviously the fuel he was carrying so they asked david fravor and his uh, co-pilot there in the other plane to go to this point and basically check out what was going on. Now, before this, unknown to every other pilot there, for two weeks previously, up to this point, they had been seeing something come on the radar system from above 80,000 feet and dropping around 50 feet to surface level of the water. Out in the middle of the Atlantic there, nothing around, no other ships, no planet, nothing just coming from the uh, sky down to the water sitting above the water and staying there. Now, the reason they said that they had not given this information out to pilots or anybody is because it had happened at night. Now, normally the sightings have been happening, I think he said somewhere after half past 12 till about five o'clock in the morning. Now, their standard run was uh, from obviously the morning time until around 11 o'clock at night. So like they do like a 12 hour shift on their training exercises. So, David Fravor obviously sets off with the pilot and they head out to this position. Now, on the radar systems, uh, and I, I must put out this because this is going to come up quite a bit. Um, it was a new radar system that they were using. I think it's the Spy One radar. Um, and basically, that, that had, had allowed them to pick up these um, images of the Tic Tac or whatever you want to call it coming in and out. And they've picked stuff up on radar before uh, i'm quite sure of this but this time it was more accurate they were picking it up all the time so to decipher whether it was a glitch from the new radar system obviously it has to be investigated so david Fravor and his uh, wingman there made them way out um now when they approached uh, they were counting down ranges, so you basically get told, you know, you're 500 yards away from it, 300 yards away from it, blah, 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 counting down the ranges. And as you get into the same area, 
as the image, you then become one with the image on the radar. So your blip, 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 blip becomes one blip, 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 and you are one blip. So they tell them that it's there. Uh, and as they approach the area, they can't see anything. And now, are you sure there's something here? Um, until they see a break in the water. Now, the water was bubbling slightly in like a cross shape just underneath the surface of the water. Now, there shouldn't be anything there. There is no islands, no coral beneath that. You're talking middle of the ocean. <clears throat> David Faber described it as being a 747 that had been sunk slightly beneath the waves. And then it was only in then that the uh, gunner in the plane behind radioed over to Commander David Faber and said, can you see at about the same time that David Faber went, that and they both saw both uh, uh, aircraft saw the tic tac it was hovering just above the surface of the water doing some kind of weird maneuvers now uh, i'll get to those in a minute because i have a theory of why it would look like it's a has he described it a ping pong ball in a glass just sat there so <clears throat> they spot this uh, uh, <coughs> the tic tac above the water and David Faber says, I'm going to go and investigate it. So his co-pilot says, well, I'll stay up here then. So she stays up here. And if you think about a clock, we're going to go from the six o'clock position down to the three o'clock position. That's where the Tic Tac is sat down here. So he banks down and starts coming down a couple of thousand feet, nice and slow. And as you know, in, in a plane, you can't just turn left. You can't just turn right. You have to bank. OK, so he starts banking down. The other plane stays up there and he's coming around to see the tic tac now he said as he got to about the three o'clock position coming round on the outside of it it then did something it wasn't expecting it stopped it noticed him it turned its nose or whichever way you might think of the front of this tic tac looking thing <laughs> there we go um <coughs> I do apologize, I've got a bit of a cold, that's why I've got this in it. Not for any other nefarious reasons. Um, so yeah, so he turned and noticed him and started mirroring his actions, following his pattern up. So he decided, well, this thing's moving, I want to get closer to it, it's not going to, it's going to rise up past me, so I'm going to turn my nose a bit more aggressively. I'm going to drop the power and then whack it on and basically cut across the circle, which is what he did. As he cut across the circle, this thing did too. But it cut across the circle and accelerated straight past him. Like that. Gone. The next thing, he's asking the plane above him. Which, don't forget, the plane above him is just sat there now. It's It can see all of him. It can see the, the tic tac. Well, it could have seen the tic tac. It could see everything. They're telling him, it's, it's gone, sir. It's vanished. So, obviously, they radio back to the Princeton. And say, whatever this object is, we found it. It's now gone. Can you see it? They then radio back about a minute or so, well, in fact, not even a minute later, saying, you're not going to believe this. It's at your cap point. We've found it. It had travelled the distance from where they were to the cap point, which I, I believe he said was about 60 miles, in three or four seconds, or what they can assume it gone ping to ping. Showing up at the cap point. Now, nobody, other than the people on the Princeton or the Nimitz, knew... This cat point. This is just a place where they're doing these war games, these manoeuvres, yeah. And I, I assume the cat point would change day to day. I'm not. I'm not too sure on that. But even if it didn't change, unless you are monitoring the U.S. communications from those ships to the pilots or monitoring the uh, conditions on board, how would you know where that cat point is and, and what is going on? So that is the basic story then of the Tic Tac. The, the next bit we have of the of the story is obviously where Chad Gable, who was a backseater, who was one of the targeters, the gunners, um, he came in, heard the debriefing of Commander David Fravor, and uh, they were due out on the next sort of run. Uh, I believe they were on some kind of tanker mission. I'm not too sure, so I, I, I'll have to clarify that a bit later. But if you'd like to see the interview with Chad Gable, he gave an interview to uh, Jeremy Corbell uh, on Jeremy Corbell's um, Extraordinary Beliefs. Uh, website and on youtube um so basically from chad's point of view then he said i'm gonna bloody catch this thing if we're going out let's see if we can find it we're, we're on a bit of a tanker mission we can have a fly around and see if we can catch something and he 
did. Uh, as David Fravor described it, obviously everyone was taking the mick out of them because you just chased a UFO. Um, and then when Chad Gable and that lot come back in, like, ha ha, you seen the UFOs out there? And he's like, yeah, it's here. Hands them the tape. And they're like, oh, shit. So everyone watches it, and that's where we get the footage from, from the uh, Tic Tac incident. Now, no one knows where the footage actually got leaked from. Obviously, there are no radar tapes that came with this. It is just the FLIR, so with the forward-looking infrared sensors footage from the craft. How it got out there, no one knows. And this is 2004. It did appear on YouTube and a few other places before it became famous. Uh, and then it was taken down and then re-released again. Obviously, then the New York Times brought the incident forward, which is where we are today. So that is kind of David Favor's story to break it down very quickly. Um, <clears throat> so that's the Tic Tac incident. That's 2004. So then in 2014, I'm sure there must be other incidents in between this. Okay, but this is the one that we can report on because this is what we have at the minute. Um, so in 2014... Ryan Graves. Now, Ryan Graves is not the one that caught the video. He's, he's not the one that caught the video. Um, I, I'm not sure if it was the same backseater that caught the gimbal video as well. Um, but basically, Ryan Graves' squadron, so Ryan Graves can talk about this, uh, were out basically doing manoeuvres. I think that was on the West Coast. Um, same sort of thing. So you're doing training, you're doing workups, you are working as a unit, you're learning your command group, etc., etc. Now, this one's slightly different because they were seeing these spherical beach balls in the sky with cubes inside them. And the cubes touch the sphere. And they were seen in their workup training areas. Now, the training area is a section of sky that's designated mainly for, obviously, the workups of the Air Force. And normally it's one in, one out two in, two out, you know, and it's all monitored as to what aircrafts are in there. So there's no little cesters, there's no... I'm sure someone does bumble in there at some point and the aircraft controllers tell them to get the f*** out of there, you know. Why are you in our airspace? Bog off. But um, they were saying they were seeing these things all the time. Now, that's not the thing that got, that's been caught on camera. Um, I'm telling you this because they nearly hit one of these things going into a workup area. It was then when they were doing some other workups just near there, that they caught the gimbal. Now, it's called the gimbal because it looks like it sort of rotates and rocks and maybe has a spinning top kind of quality to it. Um, what is not known, obviously, or what is known now, obviously, that's why I know it, is that there were seven other craft with the gimbal that were forming a formation in front of the gimbal craft and turning around and basically forming around the gimbal while this thing was moving through the wind sitting stationary then moving back sitting stationary and they had no idea what this thing was so that is from uh ryan graves um, now obviously they are <laughs> tied together because it's a u.s military it seems to me that from what ryan graves was saying is that the radar systems on their planes have now been upgraded which is why they were then seeing these spherical objects. The gimbal, when it first appeared, was on their um, radar and and targeting systems uh, displays because of the new technology on board the craft. Um, so, uh, obviously, I've put up a few of these videos on here for you to watch. So, we've seen the Tic Tac incident. We've seen the gimbal. Now, we've seen the video. I've got the videos there for you. Um... I honestly don't know what to make of these. Um, it's quite clearly nothing that we have. It's not technology that we can build. It doesn't move like anything that we have. And the things that they're describing here are so far beyond what we can perceive as technology that it must be either A, from somewhere else, B, from here, but from either a species before us or from some kind of other dimension that we are seeing into, some kind of vehicles that can transmute dimensions. Now, uh, the funny thing about the Tic Tac uh, incident is um, <laughs> I've just recently been reading, I think it was 2017, a, a similar uh, vehicle was spotted uh, over England. Um, I believe it was Hampshire. Um, <clears throat> and... Uh, these vehicles and things are getting spotted more and more and more. A lot of things, I think, is to do with the technology that we have 
today being able to record things in the sky uh telescopes um radar systems now my question is is obviously if they were seeing these things coming down from eighty thousand feet down to 50 feet above the water or just above the water surface what are nasa what are satellite companies seeing above this someone must be seeing these things coming into the atmosphere because eighty thousand feet is space but it's not you know, that's just the top of the Spy One radar system. Um, we have underwater radar detections as well. Um, I'll try and find the video for you of the <coughs> um, craft coming in near a aircraft carrier, which then descends slowly and goes into the water, which is a trans medium vehicle. Now, um, I'm going to be doing a, a few different videos on the subject of obviously UFOs and, and, and aliens and other different ideas and iterations of what we have about these vehicles. This is why I thought I'd tie these in to one incident, because technically it is. Um, and all we have to go off at the moment are reports from the US military. Now, I'm not putting any sway to the US military or anything like that or, or whatever. It does, however, seem odd to me that... Um, so this is going to... Let's go back in time. Ooh, wavy. Ooh. So, we are back to 1947, 1945. So, during the First World War, these Tic Tacs, these Foo Fighters, as they were called, were first reported by pilots describing the same, exact same vehicles, spherical objects, full of light, with cubes inside them, with triangles inside them, darting about, zooming between the pilots, here and there and everywhere. And then in 1947, we actually get another report um, from another pilot, which is recorded down in America, which... Um, that's right, so uh, June 24th, then, 1947, Kenneth Arnold saw, uh, I think it was nine objects flying over Mount Rainer in the, the USA. Now, that was a sighting only, what, about two months, I think it was before, before the Roswell incident in New Mexico. So, what I'm trying to say is, what I find mad is that these sightings, these things have, have gone on since the 40s. The things that Kenneth Arnold were describing and the fighter pilots in World War II outmaneuvered anything that we have even today. They were describing vehicles that move over 1,200 miles an hour that can do maneuvers going up, down, left, right, wherever you want. So, as I said in the very beginning, my little theory about why they can move like this uh, goes to Bob Lazar. Okay, which is the the anti gravitational technology that he talks about, and if you have an anti gravitational wave around a craft, you're going to see through it in different bits of the craft because it's distorting the uh, gravitational field around it. So it might appear like it's moving all over the place, but it's just like looking through water in a glass and something's in there. It either makes it larger, it can seem like it's moving more than it actually is because it's magnifying the movements of this craft. Um, so that's my little theory about those. Um, diving back into the current Kenneth Arnold then. So obviously Kenneth Arnold reported this. Um, I think it was a month later, we get the Roswell crash in New Mexico. Now there are other reported crashes around the world. Um, but since this incident in 1947, we have had more and more and more and more and more and more reports and sightings going forward 1955 there was a congress meeting again by the u.s congress about this because there was a flyover of many ufos over the capital hundreds of other people reported this we have the sightings in arizona the arizona lights and we do have reports from the uk uh rendlesham forest incident which i will do an episode on as well uh we've got the scottish ufo photograph uh, which I'll try and put up on here as well for you. Um, so we have these sightings going on all the time. Now I'm going to slightly digress very quickly. Take a left. Just to mention that um, alien abductions and these kind of things, I'm not 100% on. I'm not. It's never happened to me. I do have one experience that I can't explain. Um, but I'll get into that in another video because that's a bit of a personal um memory for myself um so I, I can understand why 
people might think they are being abducted or whatever. There are some people out there that say, just say they've seen stuff because they want attention. Uh, because they want to be special, you know. I've been a that's bit. I talk to the aliens, and they tell me what I, what we're doing to the planet is wrong, and uh, that, 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 that I should be living in the ocean, and I should give all my money away, and whatever. So it, you know, if you believe this, if this had a pronoun, profound effect on you, then cool. Um, more more for it. Um, but what does get me is that a lot of descriptions of alien encounters, alien abductions, um. Fairies, pixies, elves, psychedelic experiences, experiences with DMT, sort of match up to what people are experiencing now in the alien abduction uh, phenomenon. Now, I'm not saying that everyone's off their face, and I actually uh, promote the use of uh, drugs like that, uh, just like psilocybin, like DMT, like cannabis and medical marijuana, um, whether you agree with that or not. That's not for me to make you agree. Um, it's just my personal opinion. Now, looking into these things like the DMT realm, which is why I'm just going off on a slight tangent, is they are mapping the DMT realm at the moment, which is what makes me wonder whether these vehicles are either from space, from another civilization, or from some other civilization that's within another dimension. Just something for you to think about there. So there we have it, then. Just a very quick sort of um, overview of Commander David Fravor, of Commander Ryan Graves and Chad Gable's experiences. Um, I'm going to let them explain to you better uh, by you watching the Joe Rogan experience or the Lex Freeman podcast. Um, I can only tell you and report over the incidences. Uh, I can't bring any new information to you at all because what new information is there? And this is probably the, the most frustrating thing about the UFO topic is that, like I've said, this thing has been going on since, well, since recorded history. There's been drawings and pictures and descriptions of beings from other worlds, angels, whatever you want to call them, coming down. There's been uh, sightings from pilots since 1945, since we've been first flying around in the air. But yet it's still dismissed today. And this is what I don't understand. Pete, you talk to anyone about UFOs or anything, and they just look at you like you've gone out. Like, you know, it's um, it's a taboo subject. And I really don't understand this, because whether it is a psychedelic sort of experience that we are having through ourselves, because our body does produce DMT, or whether it is something from another universe, or literally from another dimension that's breaking through here, there is something here. You, you cannot deny that anymore. You can't. There is too much evidence that points and supports to the fact that we are being visited in some way, shape or form. Whether it is from ourselves, in the future or from other planets. Um, what I'd like you to do, guys, is if you could leave me uh, some comments on your thoughts and theories about this whole thing and why you think it is now that um, Congress and things are coming back and, and, and doing these meetings and stuff. And I, I don't think it's because of pressure from us. I think it's more to do with the fact that someone knows what's going on. Someone must do. And they don't want us really knowing what's going on or what's been happening. Um, I mean, there are a million theories, a million conspiracy theories out there. You can hear them all, you know. I, I'll delve into a few of them, obviously, on the channel. You know, the hollow earth uh, theory, the hollow moon theory, that the moon's a satellite uh, that we've been being watched for thousands of years, uh, the dark night satellite. Um, there's a million... I, I get a, a lot of times people want to give some credence, something special to our lives to make it so that we're not just here walking around as overgrown apes and and that's it um so hope you've enjoyed today's uh, episode anyway i hope you've learned a few little bits uh, and a few names to go and research and look into um i will be doing another episode covering bob lazar and uh, the ufo forums and things like that uh, and a few people that have been out there trying to deceive people or putting false information in and then claiming that it's actually accurate information, which is why, unfortunately, even today as I speak to you, we don't know what's going on. I can't give you an accurate answer, okay? I can just tell you what I think and what, obviously, we've been shown. Um, so, to me, I don't know. I don't know. I honestly actually think that they're from another dimension. 
I think there's possibly something that's visited us from another planet. But I think most of the things that we see are some kind of interdimensional travel. Um, and that'll be coming out in a book that I'm writing called Bridges. So I'm going to keep I'm going to keep just promoting this. And uh, I also just uh, as a another little side track, uh, I have a book that will hopefully be coming out towards the end of next year, or maybe the middle of next year, called End Without End exile begins it's written by myself and my writing partner daniel brown i think he's going to look for a pseudonym i don't know <laughs> um but yeah that should hopefully be out and that is a fantastic sci-fi experience uh, i know i'm saying that because i wrote it um but yeah so just a little bit of background on me i i do i love sci-fi i love writing about sci-fi uh, i'm writing uh, two books currently and a comic as well um uh, smoke and liquid which hopefully sometime next year should be coming out uh so that's a bit from me about where i get these iterations from and how i can put my ideas onto this subject but i don't choose anything that i can't put a fact to so this is why I only cover things like, you know, Commander David Fravor's incident, Ryan Graves' incident, and other people's things that we can have a bit of evidence to. So we've got some radar footage, we've got um, television footage, we've got the FLIR information, you know, you've got accounts from the ships. I don't think they were making that kind of thing up. Uh, you know, as you've seen, we've already debunked on this channel um, one BS video uh, from the Navy apparently showing a ufo that sat on uh, the deck of a command carrier now the reason i think that's a load of crap is because it looks like something from stargate it looks like an al -Kesh. you know it doesn't look like an alien designed that that looks like we designed that it, could get me wrong could, i could be wrong that could be a legitimate u.s navy ship stargate could be real and we could be traveling to other planets right now who knows <laughs> so keep the mystery alive and unfortunately today, you've got no outtakes because today I've not had to read from anything for once. I have just given you the information as I understand it, uh, along with a few video clips and a few photos. So once again, if you have any information that you would like to send into the channel, please send it to the email address above. So you've got any photos, pictures, any topic you would like me to cover, any topic from the UK that you'd like me to cover, um, and I will be happy to delve into it. So until next time, Dave Elsie. Mischief, signing out. Where the hell is it coming from? Ah! And stay down there. <clears throat> Sorry to interrupt, this is Mischief here. Uh, I just want to apologise. So, uh, the Conspiracy Club would like to issue an apology to Chad Underwood for getting your name wrong and mixing you up with the popular WWE wrestler, Chad Gable. Um, for some reason, Dave couldn't get his head around the fact that your name is Chad Underwood and kept calling you Chad Gable. So, um, from the Conspiracy Cupboard, from Mischief... Dave Elsie is an idiot. Also, it's uh, World War Two, Dave, not World War One, nineteen forty-five. Jesus Christ! I have to do everything myself. Right here, here's a title sequence. <laughs>